Okay, we're going to talk about peripheral neurovascular management of the upper extremities. Okay? Now, anytime you do a peripheral neurovascular management, one of the first things you're going to have to do is you're going to, it's a management, right? So you're going to have to educate the patient about, and once again, we always suggest you educate them very simplistically about one of the, of the benefits of one of the interventions that you're going to do during that management. Okay? Now, so what you need to do initially is you need to determine the learning needs. And, of course, one of the best ways to determine the learning needs is to tell the patient, hey, I'm going to be teaching you something about the peripheral neurovascular management. One of my interventions uh, during this process, and uh, is it okay if I teach you something about this, one of the benefits of doing this? And they're going to say, okay. All right, so you just basically set up the learning needs, and then you basically go right into the intervention uh, the, the benefit that you've already thought in your mind in your planning phase as to what you're going to teach this patient. I do suggest you, you think of one or two good benefits, maybe one benefit of one of the interventions and one good benefit of the other intervention so you can kind of play it by ear when you're in front of the patient. Does that make sense? Kind of give yourself a couple of options, but don't make it too difficult on yourself in the planning phase. One benefit about each one of the interventions that you're going to teach and then once you get in the room, you teach them the one that you feel is most appropriate for that patient at that particular time. Fair enough? Okay. So once again, you're going to say, hey, I'm going to be teaching you something during this process. Uh, is that okay with you? Because I'm going to, I'm, there's a test at the end of it now. You're going to have to do a 100-question you know, test and kind of make a little bit of a joke about it. That's what I would do. And uh, get, them to, get them to smile at you, and then they'll just say, yes, yeah, sure, you can teach me something. Okay. Then I would proceed to teach them about one of those interventions, okay? Once you've determined, once you've finished with your very simplistic, very uh, non-medically non based terminology, keep it as very layman terms, once you've done that teaching, you immediately ask them to teach back to you what you actually taught them, and then you've got the patient education con, uh, component completely taken care of for that particular management. Make sense? All right. So, then once you've talked to them about the patient education, give them the education, you're going to go through the assessment process of this particular intervention. Okay? And these are the assessment points that you're going to want to take care of while you're actually with the patient for peripheral neurovascular management. Okay? Now, if you're, if you're, I'm going to skip here because I have it memorized in my head a little bit different way. You're going to check the movement. You're going to check the pulses. You're going to check the sensation, the temperature, the color, the capillary refill time, and you're going to check the edema. Okay, those eight things that you're actually going to teach, excuse me, assess on those extremities. So we're going to be looking at the upper extremities. Okay, so once you've gone through the set, once you've determined what you're going to actually look for, you're basically going to say, could you do me a favor and move your fingers? We're doing upper extremities, right? You can do it the same thing. Could you do, do me a favor move your fingers? What would that be? <laughs> Movement. Okay. Now, you could, on the upper extremities, you're going to check the radial pulses. And any time you put your hands on two extremities on a patient in CPNE world, you're checking for equality. You're not necessarily thinking of strength. You're looking for the equality of the pulses. All right? Obviously, a little 14-year-old young man is going to have a tremendously good radial pulse, is he not? And you've got an elderly person who's diabetic, and they have neuropathy. They may not have quite as strong of a pulse. But they still, you still want them to be equal from one to the other. Does that make sense? So when you're checking pulses, you're literally closing your eyes and you say, hmm, does the right feel the same as the left? You're looking for equality bilaterally. That's what you're feeling for. So you're basically going to check the radial pulses, not the brachial, the radial pulses. Okay? Then you're going to check their sensation on two parts of each extremity. So you're going to ask the patient to close their eyes, hold their hands out, and then you're going to touch. You're going to say, where am I touching you at? 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 And you, teach, you touch them in two points of each, each extremity with their eyes closed. And if they can answer your questions correctly, sensation is intact, right? So we got movement, pulses, sensation. 
Now you're going to check the temperature. Okay, one of the things that I had a hard time kind of in my brain was people actually get DVTs in the upper extremities. Go figure. I, I always thought that for, for years and years and years, they only got them in the lower extremities. Well, they get them in the upper extremities also. So you're going to be checking both hands, the fingers, the hands, the wrist, the forearms, all the way up to the elbow, and you're looking for the temperature to be what? Equal. You want the temperature to be equal on both sides. If you teach the cold, the fingers are cold, then the hand is a tad bit warmer on the left, but it's still cold on the right, and then it's a little bit warmer even further up, but it's still a tad bit cool on the, on the left part or whatever. You could be, that could be a possible indication of some type of blood flow issue, right? Hence, peripheral neural vascular management. You got it? So you're going to check those, those extremities for that temperature. All right, so we got uh, movement, pulses, sensation, and now the next is going to be color. The color. People say, well, what do I say? Color is appropriate for the patient's ethnicity? No. In peripheral neurovascular management, the only two words you need to be using for color is pale or pink because you're literally looking at the nail beds. You're looking at the nail beds, and it doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. You oxygenate them well. The H&H &H is good. You're going to have nice pink nail beds. Okay? Now, if they've got a nice big fancy Earl Shive paint job on their uh, fingernails, then you're going to go straight to the fingertips and look at the color of the tips of the fingers. Those are also very rich in capillaries. So that pinkness is what you're going to look for, pale or pink. Then you can check the capillary refill time. So just blanch the finger, the nail beds of, you know, both of the extremities, blanch those nail beds, and you're looking for the color to go away. When you let go, you're looking for the color to come back in less than in three seconds or less. All right? That is the capillary <coughs> refill time cutoff. Anything over that is reportable. Three seconds or less is normal finding. Same thing with the tip of the finger. You can blanch the tip of the finger and let go. Lots of capillaries, and you can actually get color come back uh, on the tips of the fingernails. The fingers are... You know, male patients, of course, pretty much you don't have to worry about the, the fingernail polish. Um, but as far as uh, a woman patient, a female patient, a lot of times you will have fingernail polish on their fingers. And uh, if that's a particular case, then once again, you can drop down to that area right there, the fingertip, to uh, use it for your assessment data. Make sense? Then the last thing is you're going to do is check for edema, all right? Now, we get a lot of questions about edema. Well, how do I describe edema? My best answer to you is to describe edema, edema the way the CE who gives you a report describes edema. Because, you know, I'm used to using pitting and non-pitting edema as my verbalized... Uh, uh, I don't really get into numbers and things because for me it's so... I don't know, it's kind of... Uh, subjective. It depends on who's giving you the information and what their interpretation is of it. So I don't really get into the numbers, but there are some CEs that will get into the numbers with you. If they get into the numbers with you, then you want to chart and discuss it in the course of numbers. All right? And I'm not here to discuss what are numbers. That's You guys go going to have to go back and study that. And, and then if they just say pitting or non-pitting, then you want to verbalize it and chart it in the form of non-pitting or pitting. Okay? So those are the things that you're looking for. Those eight things during the assessment process is what you're looking for in peripheral neurovascular management. Okay? Temperature, no, is that seven? That's seven. Okay, I'm an idiot. I'm adding one thing for some reason in my brain. I guess because whenever I teach it to my students, I teach the seven Ps pallor and you know I teach it in that manner so it's kind of sometimes hard to bridge the gap please forgive me uh, I'm, what, what's, what's a real fancy excuse I can come up with hmm there isn't one <laughs> so just forgive me on that alright seven uh, those seven things now then the, the next thing that you're going to do is once you've gone through the assessment process what's the next thing that you're going to have to do you're going to have to do how many interventions? Two. Two interventions. Well, I'm going to give you a list of interventions that you can use for peripheral neurovascular management. 
Okay, I wrote it down so that we would get it all straight. Number one, reposition. You can reposition the patient to help increase their circulation and decrease those pressure areas um, for that particular patient. Now, the next one is you can actually ambulate the patient per, for peripheral neurovascular management. And ambulation is going to help get the blood flowing to help. It actually can help prevent them from developing uh, some type of issue, circulation issue. Okay? What about elevation? Could you elevate one of their extremities? Yes. Yes, you could elevate one of their extremities as one of your interventions. Uh, just, you know, there are some things, caveats that you need to make sure that go along with that. If your patient is prone to DVTs, then you don't want to put a pillow underneath the area to provide pressure in the area. Does that make sense? You can just take the, the, the button on the bed, the one that says, hey, elevate the feet, push that button and let the, the bed elevate itself. And that's going to help prevent those pressure areas. Okay? What about providing them with a blanket? Keeping things warm. Maybe even some socks. That's something that you can also actually do. SCDs, which is a uh, actually a, uh, a word for... Um, Sequential compression devices, those things that are hooked up to a pump, you can actually put those on, maintain those during this process. Uh, whenever you do the assessment, you're going to have to take those SCDs off, are you not? You can reapply those, and that squeezing pressure is going to help, uh, help the blood return back to the heart and help prevent uh, uh, prophylactically deep vein thrombosis. Okay? What about TED hose? Dead hose is something that you can do. Most hospitals are going away from doing both. You'll either do one or the other. And if you do not know how to put a TED hose on, I do suggest you YouTube the proper application of a TED hose. Okay, because they've got some great inside out where they do a part, half inside, half outside uh, way to apply a TED hose. It makes it real easy to put them back on. So if you don't know how to do it, you need to YouTube it. Okay. Uh, ankle circles. That's just a way you can get the patient to kind of move the ankles or the wrists around. You can actually have them do this right here for the upper extremities. Uh, but uh, we have been concentrating on all of it. But the actual um, wrist circles, elbow flexions, you can kind of have them move their joints around a little bit. And that kind of helps increase the blood flow on the upper extremities. Point and flex exercises. That means exercises, the E-X-E-R. I didn't have enough room. Exercises, okay. And those are, is we good on that? Pointing the toes, flexing the toes. That's another way you can increase it for the lower extremities. You could do this right here for the actual upper extremities. Have them squeeze their fist into a ball and extend their hands outward like this right here. That's a good way to kind of increase that blood flow. And then the last one is medications. You, can you give medications to help increase blood flow? Yes. Sure. So I'm going to come over here on this side right here. We're going to go meds. And then we're going to write some down. Does aspirin help? Yes. 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 Uh, heparin? Yeah. Lovinox. Lovinox? Uh, Plavix? Once again, I got ahead of myself. Yeah. And then, uh, what was the other one we talked about? Fragment. These are all, these are all actual, um, Medications that you can give to a patient as an intervention to help. So uh, you can kind of correlate that back to the MAM. The management, assessments, mobility, and medications. The last thing you can actually use if it's appropriate and if it is assigned. You can't just pick it out. You have, it has to be assigned to you. But these are some of the things that you can do for actual peripheral neurovascular management. Okay? Remember when you're touching somebody with both your hands, you're looking for what? Equality. Equality. All right? And uh, you have to go through the process of uh, doing the assessment. Then you have to perform the interventions. 
and of course educate the patient on one of the interventions that you're going to be doing. But when you get finished with that, then what do you have to do? Reassess. Reassess. Now here's my strategy on reassessment. If you do an intervention with a patient, doesn't it help when they say, now how does that feel? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that feel better? Don't you feel warmer? Doesn't that make you feel nice and warm and fuzzy? You see what I'm doing in my head right here? Doesn't that lead them to the, my, listen, this is my strategy. Don't say, well, what do you think about that? You just opened up a can. You don't know how big of a can of worms you just opened up. It could be a small can. It could be a big can. All right? So kind of give them the answer that you want them to give you by saying, doesn't that feel better? Does, don't you feel warm? Don't you feel warmer? Because all of your managements, you're literally asking questions after every intervention. You're trying to collect data back from the, the patient. Okay, what type of data are you trying to collect? Good data. You want to be able to go into the evaluation phase of your PCS, and you want to be able to say, I met all of my goals because, in quotation marks, state patient's comments based on those questions that you asked that patient. So always ask them questions. Good questions. How does that feel? Doesn't that feel better? Don't you feel wonderful? Don't you think I hung the moon? Those types of questions that you're going to ask the patient after every intervention. Okay? Does that make sense? And that's basically your goal, the entire PCS, for every management. You're going to be doing that assessment, interventions, and reassessment, and ask them questions related back to your original goal that you set for yourself during your care plan so that when you're in the planning, when you're in the evaluation phase, you can justify that you met the goal. Make sense? Now, let me just make sure real quick. Um, so you will have to evaluate the learning, understanding, and the patient's response. We evaluated the learning understanding when? At the beginning, as soon as we actually taught it. Now, if you want to wait to the intervention to do the patient education, you can do that. It's okay. We don't mind. As you're in the moment, the question is, is, can you remember it under stress? Does that make sense? Okay, so when you go home and practice it, you're going to have to practice it at one specific moment. So that and you practice it in that particular moment on every single area of care so that you'll do it the same. It's duplicatable, if that makes sense. You want everything that you do while you practice to be duplicatable, actually, on the floor when you're standing at a patient's bedside. The pressure is on, and, you know, you're sweating, you're... Your socks are soaking wet. You're sweating so bad. Okay? So you want, do want to make sure that when you practice it at home, you practice it in the same spot on every single area of care. Make sense? Now, that's peripheral neurovascular management. I hope it actually helped you guys. Mm -hmm.